Do you know Christians have secrets? I know it seems like it, as Christians, we're supposed to be all about sharing the word and creating new disciples. But Jesus laid out three specific things in Matthew 6 that we're to do in private. Do you know what those are? If you do, throw them in the comments below. Giving, prayer, and fasting. Have you ever done any of these things in public? Of course you have. I'm not saying those things sh shouldn't be done in public or be seen, but those who do see them should be limited. In Matthew 6, 1 through 4, the Bible says, Be careful. Do not practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that when you give, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Have you ever been part of a pay it forward trend at Starbucks or Chick Fil A? If you haven't heard of a pay it forward, basically the person in front of the other person pays for the person behind them. It's such a great blessing to pass on to someone who isn't expecting it. God is using one person to pass his blessing on to another person. This simple action could be the, the first seed that kindles or rekindles a relationship with God. Let's take the same situation, but at the end, the person that has paid for the product is waiting to be thanked or praised for the pay it forward. Who did that person do it for? God or themselves? They did it for themselves. In March of this year, the New York Post did a little survey of about 2,000 people. And, they, and what this survey revealed was 84% of those 2,000 people would go out of their way to pay it forward whenever it was possible. I am truly thankful when this happens. And it reminds us that as followers of Jesus, we are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. We should continually thank Him for the blessings in our lives in prayer. In Matthew 6, 5 through 8, the Bible says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing out in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door. Pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Everyone can or should be able to pray in public. But this is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is your prayer, private prayer life. Do you know what the definition of prayer is? Prayer is defined as a spiritual fellowship with God, as in adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. When you enter a time of prayer, it's a time of, of fellowship and, and bidirectional communication with our Father in heaven. Jesus thought this was so important that he gave us an example of to use uh, in Matthew 6, 9 through 14. 
Many people call this ver these verses in the Bible the Lord's Prayer. This prayer is widely used throughout church and the world today. Do you know that God answers every single prayer? He does. He chooses to answer in three different ways. Yes, no, and not right now. Has anyone had one of those not right now answers that feels just like a flat, no, nope, it's not going to happen? I know I have, and it stinks. In this world, we're all about the instant gratification. It is so easy to say, I, I, I want this, let's go grab it at the store or a restaurant. What God is truly saying in these moments is, not in your time, but in my time. Or, you're not ready for the things you are asking. In December of 2020, my mom got sick. Her cancer was spreading, and, and nothing could stop it. It was a very tough time, and I know everyone was praying for healing for my mom and to restore her. And while I was traveling in Puerto Rico in January of 2020, I can remember dropping down to my knees and many nights asking, even begging God to heal my mom. I thought, what I thought was a no was a not yet. I want to give you more time with her. The hardest part is I didn't realize this until the moments, uh, the months after my mom passed away and went to heaven. So I've come to embrace those, you are not ready for the things you are asking, answer. Prayer is a powerful tool God gives us, but it's not just a tool that is to be used alone. Jesus gives us additional method to grow in our relationship, and that's fasting. I know everyone hears the word fasting, and, and the first thing that comes to mind is, I can't eat, or I can't drink. I'm going to starve. The truth is, that is not the case. What do we as Christians use this tool of fasting for? For closeness to God? For blessings when undertaking responsibility? Repentance? Spiritual breakthrough? Maybe deliverance from a reoccurring sin. Revival. Wisdom and guidance in making a decision. So how are, how are we to act while using this tool of fasting? Well, in Matthew 6, 16 through 18, the Bible says, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only your Father who is unseen. Your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Have you ever fasted? Did you ever find yourself weak? I find as I fast the first couple days, I don't, after the first couple days, I don't get hungry, which is incredible. God has made the human body with an amazing ways of sustaining his people. During the process of fasting, we are removing the earthly nutrition, and replacing it with God's spiritual food for us. This allows us to cultivate a hunger for God and refocus our hearts, minds, and souls on His path for us. During your time of fasting, did you ever see God move in miraculous or unimaginable ways? I know I have. And it blew my mind how God showed up in those situations. I found that fasting and prayer go together to form this power tool. 
So we can see an example of this power tool being used in Mark 9.29. When Jesus cast out demons that his disciples couldn't. Jesus said, this kind can only come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. What is your reason for doing these secret actions of giving prayer and fasting? Is it a public display of attention, PDA, to yourself? Or is it a private growth opportunity? One focused, one is focused on you and one is focused on a relationship between you and God. If you fall into that PDA situation, I need you to stop. Your relationship with God is not Instagram or Facebook or whatever the most popular trend at the moment is. It's a real connection, a real relationship with God. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who sent his son to come down to this world and die for you and die for me so that he could have a relationship with us. Let's acknowledge that and invest into a relationship with him. I appreciate y'all watching. If you have any questions or prayer concerns, please leave them in the comment below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day and God bless you.